Okay, so in this video we're going to be applying a little bit more of the Riemann sum to approximate the area under the curve. So in this case we're going to be working on the integral 0 to 5 of the function x squared minus 3x plus 1 dx. So just to show you how the approximation is going to increase in accuracy as we increase the number of rectangles that we use in our approximation, I'm going to find the exact integral, the exact value of this integral. So this is going to be x cubed over 3 minus 3x three squared over 2 plus x. So that's 5 to 0. And this should come to 55 over 6. So that's going to be the area underneath that curve on that interval. Because if we have 5 in here, that's going to become, we're going to substitute 5 into it, and then we're going to put 0, so that's going to become 0, so that's what gives us 55 over 6. So that's our exact solution. Now, what's going to be our approximation? Well, we know that delta x is going to be equal to b minus a, which is in this case 5 minus 0, over the number of rectangles that we choose. We know that the integral itself is going to be approximated by the sum, the Riemann sum, j equals 1 of the function delta x. And the other thing we know is that our function is in this case x squared minus 3x plus 1 and we can calculate the error by taking the analytic solution or the exact value and subtracting whatever approximation we get from it so this is going to be our approximate value xj over delta x and if we run the percentage error all we need to do is take the ratio of this error to the total to the exact value and that's going to give us the percentage error of that calculation so to implement this I have made a little spreadsheet on Excel so I'm going to pop this up here and basically what I have set it up here into three sections so this section contains all the inputs this is the function that we have defined so that's just the algebraic um, expression there the interval is defined by a equals to 0 b equals to 5 and then n is just the number we're going to choose. Delta x is set to the equation, so that's going to be this cell minus that cell over this cell, so that's going to be b minus r, b minus a over n. And then on this column, we're going to have our all our values xj, so that's going to depend on our initial value, which is a, so this cell here is set to equals to this cell. This cell here is going to be the previous cell plus delta x and I have put those um, little dollar signs um, on there so just basically to lock the cell in so that every time that I drag this down it is going to take the same cell value for that but this value of the cell is going to change so if you have used a little bit of Excel before you will know that you can drag this down and that will automatically update the values of all those cells according to that formula and finally, this is going to be the color of the function. So here I have written the function as I have it here, but with respect to the cell next to it. And it changes every time I use it, um, the different one. Finally, here we have the value of the exact integral, which I introduced as 55 over 6. Here on the Riemann sum, we have the sum of all the cells. So I have made a total of 100 cells that we can work with because I want to use 100 rectangles. We can probably expand that, but for now, we're going to take 100 as the maximum. And we're going to multiply that by the cell G6, which is delta X. So that's what we have in here. That's what the Riemann sum is going to be. And finally, I have made two cells that calculate the error and the percentage error based on those two cells. So now that we have that, let's start our uh, calculation with 10 rectangles. So what I need to do now is I need to drag this down to 10 and do the same with this one. All right, so let's have a look at here. 
our ribbon sum turns out to be 6.875 and we notice that the percentage error is quite significant it's actually 25 percent of that that is a very large error and in any application of this we would never want an error as large as that so obviously using 10 rectangles was not a good idea so let's use a different number let's use 50 that means I need to drag these cells down all the way to 50 so we're gonna have 50 points and we're going to have 50 points in here as well so let's see how Riemann sum turns out well we have reduced the error to 5% by increasing the number of rectangles by 5 so that's quite good and we can see that the value here is getting a lot closer to the exact value so that's very good now let's have a hundred rectangles so let's have that now I'm gonna drag this all the way down to a hundred points so we're gonna go back up let's drag this down all right let's see what we get now three percent not such a large difference between 150 but it's still a quite a significant improvement and we can see that we're getting a lot closer now the error is just 0 0.24 and if you consider the total proportion between those numbers that's uh, that's a reasonable amount of error to have in the calculation so you can expand this and, and the reason I chose 100 as the maximum is just to show you what happens as you increase it uh, even with 100 rectangles which is quite small considering the power of computation that we have on these days I mean you get a reasonable approximation for this integral so that's just to show you the power of this approximation method and before I conclude this video I just want to make a remark that this method that I have this is the most robust approximation to a definite integral that you can come up with this is literally taking the definition of the Riemann integral and basically just watering it down so that we can use the sum in it to approximate the integral but there are a lot of better methods that can give you better accuracy with the same number of rectangles than I did in here and they're usually called quadrature methods so if you're interested in those there are two that are really common one of them is called the trapezoidal rule which instead of using rectangles underneath the area uses trapezoids and there's another one called Simpson's rule which uses uh, approximations based on the midpoint between two points and so forth so there are a lot of different methods that have been developed that are computationally less intensive and provide better accuracy but in the end technically with this robust method as long as you have the computational power you can literally just approximate this integral as perfectly as you want so long as you have the resources to do that so this is just one of the many ways in which we can use definite integration and in fact you can use this in a lot of different cases just to get an idea of what the solution or the exact value of the integral should be so in the next video we're going to continue on more applications of definite integration and we're going to actually be applying it to find the centroid of an area so that's what we're going to do in the next video